the the only time that I really really got started started with Vince was the, during the time that they wanted to do the gobbledygooker, and that was a good thing. That was for the kids. That wasn't for that wasn't for uh, uh, what do you call it for, for the adults. And I didn't. I've never wrestled in in uh, at the Meadowlands. You know what I mean? That's what. I had never been there, so I didn't know what kind of crop it was. So when I broke out of the egg, I was dressed up in the egg, which I was six hours in there because they had me in there because they didn't want anybody to know who was in there. And they had a they had a big old uh, wooden box, and then the egg was on top of it. And so I was inside the egg for a long time. So anyway, give you back to there. So when I broke out and I saw that, you know, it was like, wow, man, they were booing it. I mean, a lot of boos, man. And I guess they were expecting maybe Hulk Hogan come out there of the egg because they were calling it exciting at the Survivor Series. Or they were expecting maybe uh, China to come out or something. But then here comes out a, you know, a, a picture of a, of a guy in, dressed in a, in a turkey suit, you know, and it was kind of like supposed to be like the San Diego chicken. They were trying to make something like that, but for the kids. And it just, it just, it just, they booed the heck out of it. Anyway. Gene, Gene Okerlund, he says to me, come on, kid, let's get this thing over. So we did. We went up there, and he, he followed everything I did. I danced with him, and he tried to do stuff. He would fall. Next next day, he was black and blue. And I'm talking about, you know, his legs and all that. And he tried so hard. And I have a lot of respect. And, you know, I know he's rest in peace, you know, my friend. But, you know, he, uh, I really do. So Vince had the right idea. It's just in the wrong place. Now, when we did it at the in in uh, when the WW at that time WWF went to Orlando and we did it, and I came out of the Gobby Gooker, it was great. It was awesome. It was like the kids went crazy, but not the Meadowlands. You know, you can't do it in the Meadowlands. So he had the right idea, just the wrong place. And uh, I believe we all make mistakes. And uh, that was just one mistake that we all make. And we have to be forgiven to each other. And that's it. Was it them that approached you with that job? Or were you calling them to try and get jobs prior to the gobbledygooker? Well, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'll tell you the truth here. I was calling them because I really wanted to get into the WWE. I thought I had a potential. And maybe they'd give me an opportunity. Like all of us that tried, you know. And uh, so... One day I call, I call, and finally somebody picked up the phone and he says, Who is this? I mean, really nasty. I'll tell you what it was. It was Pat Patterson. He says, Hey, he says, What are you, how did, how did you get this number? Because I had got the number for the booking office at, at, in, uh, you know, up in, in, up in Connecticut, Stanford. And he and says, no, Don't ever call here again. And they hung up on me. And so I said, You know what? If, you know, they can take it and I didn't think about it so I was married to my first wife at that time and I was home in Tennessee and I was a gymnastics instructor and somebody started calling and it was from them I don't know who it was but my wife would pick up the phone and she'd say hey man it's it's, it's a WWWF they want to talk to you I says I don't want to talk to them hang up on them so she did they called me about five times Finally, once I, I picked up the phone and it was then, and they said, hey, don't pick up. Don't, don't close. Hector, don't. He says, Vince wants to talk to you. So then Vince talked with me and talked to me and, you know, told me about it. And we talked about it. And then he uh, handed me over to Pat Patterson, which is interesting. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was interesting. So uh, anyway, that's how it, that's how it happened. That's how it happened. That's what right, happened. It, that it didn't last. It didn't last uh, five, six, seven months, and then they give me my release, and uh, you know that's the way it was. How did they approach you with explaining the gimmick to you when Vince first talked to you about it on the phone? No, he, he was very, very, uh, very professional, like he is, and like he's been. He was very professional. This, this is idea. And I believe that Dusty Rhodes at that time was working with him. Dusty had mentioned my name, that that would be a good, a good thing for that. They also wanted to do something different. I heard later on, and uh, they wanted to put me in I also as a wrestler, and I would do both. I could do the gobbledygooker thing, and then also wrestle as the, uh, as the uh, as a as the bandito. I think that's what they wanted to do. They were going to do me as a bandito, as a heel. 
I'm not a very big guy. You know what I mean? At that time, I was maybe 215, 220, you know, but uh, I could move. And speed was my thing, you know. That's, <laughs> that's I had to because the guys are really big. Those guys are really big and heavy, too. So was the gobble, gobbledygooker supposed to be like a mascot or an actual wrestler? Well, he was supposed to be a mascot, I believe. And it was supposed to be for the, uh, like the Survivor Series, you know, and the, for the, you know, Thanksgiving thing, past Thanksgiving holidays. And then uh, later on, I, I probably, they would introduce me as the bandito. And then every, every Thanksgiving Survivor Series, I'd come out and come back out and promote the, you know, promote Survivor Series as a gobbledygooker. That's what I believe they wanted to do. And that would have been really great because, you know, it would have been good, you know. Uh, the money they promised uh, never came through. I didn't. I mean, it's just, I mean, they could say it's hearsay. But I, uh, I'm telling you the truth. I'm not telling you a lie. And, uh, but I'm thankful, you know, because my brother, Eddie, they treated him a lot, a lot better. And they treated him well, and they treated my uh, Chavo Jr. well, and they treated Chavo, Chavo Sr. You know, my brother Sr. had some problems, but we all have problems. My gosh, do we all not? You know? Did you hear the story that The Undertaker, who also debuted on that Survivor Series, it might be one of the best Survivor Series of all time, by the way, in my opinion, but did you hear the story that The Undertaker initially thought that he was going to be the guy coming out of the egg? I did, you know, that's, I heard that, I think uh, Nick told me that, Nick Massey, and I said, I never heard that, <laughs> but maybe he did. Now, when they can, when I, when I flew in, they flew me in and, and uh, to go talk, you know, the first time, and the limo picked me up at the airport, and guess who was there? Mark, you know, the undertaker, he was there sitting next to me. We were talking, they were hiring him at the same time. And we were in debt, but, you know, it makes kind of sense that he, he probably thought that he might have been coming out of the egg, you know, not this character they wanted to do for the children. And I've heard you, uh, I know you did a promo with Coco Beware and maybe some others where you're making the gobbledygooker sounds. Did somebody, like, explain to you what sounds they wanted to hear, or was this Never. you ad-libbing? No, I did ad lib it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, or I just do something because, and then the, the Gobby Gooker had eyes, and when they had eyes, they had eyes like this, right? And they were all the, the white stuff, like here, and you could see those little holes. So let me tell you an incident that happened. So I, they were, they were, they were gonna at Madison Square Garden. So that night, that night, they, they, uh, they told me before the matches, everything before, before the people came in, that they wanted to showcase the Gobby Gooker. I said, okay. He said, and I used to do a routine where I walked in, I flipped over the ring, I landed on my feet, I do, I do the dance, I do a cartwheel, I do a round off, and I do some things that I know how to do, and I and uh, and as I and as as uh, so they they said, okay, well let's 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 let them let's let them have a, a rehearsal, and he said, oh no, Hector's got it, leave it alone, you know, Hector. So okay, I you know I could do it. I've been doing it for like two or three months now, you know. And I said, yeah, I, I can do it. So uh, so they, they said, all right. So the time comes and they turn on the lights and they showcase me. And they, well, forgive me, they turned off all the lights of the, of the of, of Madison Square and they put a spotlight on me. And when I hit the spotlight, I couldn't see because those white eyes lit up like white and I couldn't see out of them. So I couldn't say anything. And, lit, and look, and I need glasses and I still was trying to see out of that. That was a difficult situation. So there, the guys in the back, which I never realized who they were, because I, I would have probably come back and said something to them, were pushing me and pushing me and saying, hey, you need to get out there. Come on. Hey, you're on. You're on. You're on. And I'm going, man, I can't see. I can't see. So they pushed me out, and I couldn't see the thing. I know that I was out because I could feel the cables on my feet. I started feeling my cables. I walked. I hit my shins. I on the stairs, my st I knew I bled because I went back and I was bleeding on my shins. And I finally, I got in, I, I felt the ropes, I flipped in, I didn't even know if I was flipping inside or outside of the ring. But I felt something on my feet and then I landed on my butt. And then the lights came on. So I got up and acted like I was hurt in my, you know, like I was funny, like I did that on purpose, like I wanted to do that purpose. 
And then finally, when the lights came on, I did all my whole routine, spotless, not a, not a, not a, nothing happened. So I come back into the dressing room right after the whole thing. Right? I'm walking upstairs because it was upstairs. And I go through and Vince is looking at me like he's got that look in his face, which not a good look. And I know he was he was a little ticked. I didn't want to say anything. So Gorilla Monsoon looks at me. He looks at me like that. And I didn't say anything. I go back and I get into my stuff and I start taking my stuff off. You know, I said, I'm thinking, my, screw this, man. <laughs> so, but finally, Gorilla comes, he comes in and he goes, you couldn't see, right? And I go, you think? And then he said, yeah, we finally figured it out. <laughs> but these guys were pushing me, you know, they, they should have they should have done that. But uh, and, and nowadays, of course, it would all be rehearsed and something that they put so much effort into promoting. It doesn't seem like they ever rehearsed with you. Well, yeah, but you see, I could do it. It's just that I couldn't do it blind. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Instead of yeah, being, I mean, it was white. Everything was white. I couldn't see out those holes. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And they were yeah. pushing me, and I finally felt I, 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 I was blind. You know, yeah. they didn't realize that 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 lights. Now, if I would have, if we would have rehearsed it, and I would have said, no, 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 cut it, cut it, cut the lights, turn the lights on, let me come out on my own. Don't put, don't shine the lights on me, because I couldn't see worth of nothing, man. Was Pat Patterson nicer to you in person? Look, Pat, I'm, I don't, Pat's already gone. You, we shouldn't talk about each other about, you know, Pat was a great wrestler. I saw him wrestle against my dad in El Paso. I got a lot of respect for him for that. He was a great wrestler and knew how to wrestle. Oh, my God, was he great. I mean, I, I saw I saw matches with him with my father, and they were great wrestling matches. So uh, that he that he didn't, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to say nay or or great, you know, but he he treated me uh, that time. That was the truth of what I told you on the phone. And of course, they brought you back for the battle royal at WrestleMania 17. Do you have anything to share about that coming back yeah. as the Gooker after all those years? Yeah. Well, I knew that I was going to be taken out by uh, by uh, tugboat Fred, you know, and uh, the group they they told me they couldn't find the old. The old because they asked when I when I gave the release papers I sent them back the uniform the you know the Gabby Gooker what they had given me and I sent it back to them so I don't know what happened to them they said we don't have it anymore Hector we've kind of got a different thing that we've got and so instead of having the 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 it was like a like a sock that went over with their eyes and it was built for me in my face it was this was a helmet and it had like a little latch and that was it and so. I went out on that battle royal, and I was I was I was in the air, and Fred had me up in the air, like that. <laughs> he had me way up in the air, and I'm going like that, and I'm grabbing on of my head because that mask, that head was popping out. I said, Fred, Fred, go ahead, let's get it done because this thing's coming off. So he was he was cool. He got it done, and uh, but that I had a good time with her, and uh, they gave me an opportunity, and I am thankful for that. And, Anytime the WWE gives me an opportunity, I'm very thankful. And, uh, they, they, I can't say anything bad about them. They given, uh, they did marvelous things with my, with my family, with, uh, you know, inducting my brother in the Hall of Fame, doing things with uh, Eddie, doing things with my, talking well about my dad, you know, and talking well about my brother Chavo and, and Chavo Jr. You know, no, you know, life is too short. We treat each other with respect. We treat each other. We forgive each other, and we go on. And I'm hoping that. And if they have something against me, well, I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry if I ever did anything to you. If I did it, forgive me. If not, that's between you and the creator. I know that they eventually put out a gobbledygooker toy. Do you get royalties off of that toy? I don't know. I can't. I don't know. I'm not going to say yay or nay. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I know there's. I heard, I heard about it. I yeah. heard about it. I said that'd be nice. You know, <laughs> you know, I'm getting in my older years now. I'm getting old. You know, and getting ready to retire as a teacher. Sixty-nine. I mean, going to be sixty-nine this year. And uh, you know, I tell you what. I'm every wrestler of one of us, like every pro athlete. And I tell you, I'm. I, I you know, I don't let them touch my body because here in Florida, I haven't had any surgeries yet. 
but uh, some of my friends that have wrestlers that I know that have surgeries, they haven't they haven't come out too good. So they always, you know, these these doctors think that they 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 can work wonders, but I don't think so. You know, I, all the wrestlers that I know that are hurt now, they're even sometimes worse than they were before. So I don't let them touch my body. You know, the only one that touches my body is my Lord. Now, I don't know if you heard about this, but a, a couple of years ago, the gobbledygooker with somebody else playing it oh, won yeah. the WWE 24-7 title. Were you disappointed that that they didn't use you for that? No, you know what? They were even mocking me. I know that because I saw it. <laughs> it just it made me laugh, you know, because I've never had anything against the McMahons. And that comes from the top. And or whoever whoever they gave it to, you know, but they they treated me right. And I, you know, like I said, I'm not gonna talk bad about anybody, and there is no bad at talking about. And if they want to talk bad about me, and that's between them and the creator, you know. I this life is too short, man. They need to treat each other right and do right and forgive each other and keep going, man. And you know what? It's just an experience.